gets up at the end. Thought he might take a chance. Ashwin gets five. Hello, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to today's episode of uh, Reminisce with Ash. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, good evening to this episode of Reminisce with Ash. Um, I'm extremely excited today uh, for for a lot number of reasons. Uh, I've been totally excited for the entire duration of the last last twenty twenty four hours uh, because of the kind of guest I'm going to have. Uh, and point number two, because of the match that we'll be talking about. Uh, this is a match that provided heartbreak for me. Uh, exactly about uh, let's say twenty four years and a bit and. Uh, um like every other indian who is watching cricket i believed india will go on to win this world cup it didn't quite ensue sachin tendulkar had an unbelievable world cup he was batting at his best uh in the sense he was oh <laughs> thank you thank you hairstyle thank you for the comments on my hairstyle uh these are all you know covid related issues uh, i've clearly uh, i've clearly not had time to go out and get a, get a haircut and it's not advisable either i hope none of you are doing it uh, but today uh the guest is extremely exciting for me first one and the next one is the match that we'll be talking about uh i've also taken one of these games where india didn't go on to win uh and as we are talking uh to be pick, to be perfect on timing is our guest for uh, today got a very unique instagram as well sanjay photos um so uh, i'm really looking forward to have a chat with him hi sanjay how are you doing welcome uh, on the reverse side on this uh, series of reminisce with ash how are you doing <laughs> Good, good. This seems like a, a very uh, well-planned vengeance because I did an interview <laughs> with you a few weeks back. So after that has finished, you thought, okay, let me now get onto the other side and ask the question. But as you said, you know, uh, this match is brilliant, and me too, and I'm sure the fans as well would be excited to talk uh, specifically about this game. Yeah, Sanjay. Before we get into the match, uh, I know, I know, this is one of the episodes that I didn't have to prepare much about the match. because i know my guest will be doing the honors for me and i can take a back seat <laughs> and uh, for me uh, for me sanjay uh, tell me something you grown up and played entire cricket of yours from mumbai right so uh, how, how i'm sure shivaji park shivaji park means a lot to you uh, do yeah. you remember the first time you walked out to shivaji park and played a game how did you feel see my introduction to cricket was natural because my father played for india and there was uh, there were a lot of cricketers who would come to my place the old place that we used to live in dadar and interestingly because i used to keep seeing all these you know superstars around the house so the cricketers that i met were all test cricketers you know my father's friends were all test cricketers sunil gavaskar ji ar vishwanath prasanna chandrashekar rohan kanai from the west indies came to my old house and i'm a kid and there was only one spot in that area you played cricket and i'm looking at these guys and i want to be like them the fans are all you know gunning for them so i thought you know this is a great way to be- become popular as well so for a long time ashwin i felt that i want to be a cricketer and when i grow up i'll become a test cricketer by default it's only later when i got some brains that i realized that it's not that easy okay but uh, do you remember the do you remember the occasion were you excited for a long time when you went out to play it could, could be shivaji park or like uh, going out to wankhede and playing do you remember that feeling how was it 24 hours leading up to the game Yes. Uh, so my father was more Shivaji Park. I was more Matunga, where my school was. So my first introduction to hardball cricket and the whole gear, wearing the whites, uh, was when I played for my school, and it was uh, unbelievable because until then I just dreamt about wearing those uh, whites. They were more creams, you know. In our time, it was more about having the off-white sort of flannel with pleats and stuff, then wearing pads and gloves and the shoes that made noise. you know on a hard surface so those were the thing that i was fascinated by so my first introduction was school nets and it was just incredible it was like i was that was the only thing that i was going to do in my life and eventually when it happened and you know it was just something i was very single minded about it and i'll never forget that feeling matunga cricket ground nets and then you know the jai shield at uh, cross maidan in town and all that those are just great days sanjay if you had a feeling of going out there and that exuberance that existed within you that's exactly how i felt over the last 24 hours knowing that i am going to be on this side and talking to you and asking you questions <laughs> is something that really excited me but before okay. uh, we delay it much i will get to the segment where i will ask you questions but for now sure. tell me what do you remember about this 1996 world cup semi final sanjay because for me 
uh, it looked like you know i mean i didn't i didn't know much of cricket then i was just playing the game i was watching every game that india played with an intent of saying india should be the best in the world they should go on to win the world cup uh, yeah. for me it was all about sachin and india's great chance after that pakistan victory so uh, how was the dressing room mood going into this game so that match 1996 uh, at the eden gardens first of the two semi finals we had gone uh, through to the semis but what happened before that had a lot to do with our performance against sri lanka at eden gardens we beat pakistan a much stronger side uh because pakistan at that time was superior they was they would beat india virtually every one day game so we were the underdogs in that particular quarter final to the knockout game and we won that game and there were there were three days of euphoria ashwin three days of you know just being in bangalore and soaking in the celebration and people were so proud that we had beaten pakistan and sri lanka was sort of a little stop before going for the final game in lahore you know that is how we looked at it although sri lanka had beaten us earlier in the tournament they were somebody that we were intimidated by because yeah. we had just beaten pakistan our confidence was very high and that may have had something to do with us uh, losing to sri lanka we thought at the time that sri lanka was a two batsman team sana jayasurya and ramesh kalu and, Ramesh Kalu and, and yeah. you know if you get them out we'll be through straight away to lahore but but so it was the feeling it was the case where you thought okay this world cup is done we'll go to lahore get the world cup and come back home is that is that what you guys were thinking yes and you know since 2000 you know when i've been watching you guys and that has been the big change that i've seen in indian cricket where mentally you guys are a lot tougher uh, we used to get a little too excited there was the 1992 match against australia as well on the verge of winning and then we just got panicky and let the match go so this was us being a little you know to complacen all the it was a world cup eden garden everything was there to get us uh, motivated but surely we were but somewhere at the back of our minds we were a little too not confident but weren't really you know wanting to beat sri lanka the way we were in say bangalore before the pakistan game and i think made a wrong call as well with the toss and stuff so yeah it was that's exactly where i was getting to sanjay let's let's talk about the game a little bit in itself yeah uh sure. did it did it look like one of those wickets that would get demonus at the back end of the game was it a, a you know a consolidated decision to bowl first how was it i mean it's it's a talked about point yeah again <laughs> there is a match prior to this one before the decision you know what happens when we are doing commentary you know it is when we watch a certain performance we talk about it we don't realize something had happened before the game or the match before that particular game that had a huge bearing on what happened there so india sri lanka we played them earlier in the tournament at firosha kotla and we batted first and we got 270 runs and they chased down that sri lanka chopped it off in the 49th over so we realized these guys chase targets pretty well so we won the toss and the reason for getting you know for wanting to bat second was to not allow sri lanka to chase again so that was a slightly defensive okay. move having said that in that run chase when we had to get just about 250 sachin and me for the second wicket we had a partnership of 90 runs and looking pretty good and at the time i'm sure people are thinking wow you know what went for one there should be wicket lahore here. lahore beckons yeah yeah and suddenly you know it happens you lose a couple of wickets and the pitch becomes unplayable also the fact that they had a bowling attack more suited to that surface than the one that we had correct and and generally traditionally eden gardens hasn't been one of those greatest ch- uh, chasing venues especially in white ball cricket i mean that's not then but since 1996 whatever track record we are seeing it's proven as a case uh, but from 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 a viewer's yes. perspective i'm not talking from a cricketer understanding perspective today uh, what was it was it a ploy yeah. to like get anil uh, anil bhai bowl the first few overs to try and dismantle jayasurya and kalwitrana uh, i mean what what was the thinking behind it see we had a long meeting before the game and if the meeting was for about an hour 55 minutes was spent on sana jayasurya and kalwitrana Did you contribute much? Get... Sorry. Did you contribute anything? No, they both got out in the first over. No, but did you contribute in the meeting? You know me. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it's no, hard for me to keep my mouth shut. It's not about. It's not about me knowing you. It's about you telling us what you contributed. I don't remember because I just couldn't keep my mouth shut, right? So if there is a discussion happening, I I'm sure I must have contributed. Uh, and whatever I did, I have no idea exactly. But you know, our whole focus. was on getting these two guys out because they were in tremendous form they were sort of pinch hitters of quality from both ends 
and we didn't quite think about guru singa and arvinda tisula and arjuna ranatunga rushal mahanamora hashan tilak ratne so kalu vita and sanat jay surya all the planning was done for them and once they were gone we were just going to the motions with the others and arvinda tisula when i look at the numbers now as she played an unbelievable innings you know he got he i'll tell you exactly he got 47 uh, 66 of 47 balls in a score of 85 at the time 14 fours and that really yeah. set you know just got us off the rails a bit in fact if you look if you if you look at it in hindsight the kind of pitch it was how how difficult it became to bat after one wicket fell to come at the back of two wickets back to back i think one of both of them were held at third man was it was did you did you hold on to one of those yeah i held on to i think kalu vetha and and sanat at third man yeah both i think the other yeah. one was taken by venkatesh prasad so we not got two wickets in the yeah so both of us got a very just imagine both of us third man fine leg and match starts and two of us in the game straight away with catches in, in the deep no but i mean uh, the crowd and the way the crowd erupted after those catches were taken and just the way jayasurya batted against india at the ferosha kotla and the way he was dismissed and in walked aravinda and genuinely even as a fan we are thinking hey here is arvinda here is arjuna ranatunga and here is roshan mahanama okay sri lanka is getting to 220 and the way sachin is batting uh, right. and the way especially the way he batted at the vankade against australia uh, the fans were thinking yeah this game is done but what was it in the pitch sanjay was there anything when we bowled first as well or did it deteriorate much in the later half uh, i don't think the pitch would have changed that much you know because you're talking about a day night game hmm. so the pitch was there ready to turn but look at our bowling attack okay. anil kumble and ashish kapoor and nobody else really ashish kapoor is sort of you know more of flight the kind of yeah so he's not a sun of jay surya you know guys you need it for that kind of a pitch so we didn't quite see what the pitch had as potential help for those kind of bowlers and they had muthaya murli dar and kumar dharma sena kumar dharma sena surya yeah so they had the attack and in that era you know ashwin sachin was the one player he got out at india sort of just lost a bit of uh, self confidence it do had got out early um, azharuddin came and it wasn't a pitch to his liking the ball wasn't coming on they were all fired i'll never forget a smile that dharma sena gave when uh, uh, he bowled the first ball to azhar when he came in sir sachin was out so they were sort of you know they felt you know, half the indian team is gone and azhar came and he faced a coming one ball from dharma sena who not a big spinner bowled a short of length it was almost like a bouncer around waist high and he sort of looked around at everybody and i'll never forget that all of them were like okay this is our game sachin is no, gone but... the pitch is you know just perfect for us you guys are not going to win this one to to keep things in perspective kumar still does it after he gives you out nowadays so i'm not surprised <laughs> that kumar did it then Uh, but i remember azhar actually chipping one back to kumar dharma sena then and it seemed like the game was done once azhar had got out and, but tell me something sanjay what is uh, in fact i remember after this game i actually turned into a spinner and went around bowling around the stumps to get everybody out you know around the legs it mm-hmm. became some sort of a fascination we all mm-hmm. knew shane won did it for a long time but sanat jayasurya just came in bowled over the stumps were there any big footmarks from where it spun because i know sachin got out uh, run out he probably didn't see the ball go through and i mean if i blame you today because you didn't call people will accept it but it was obviously yeah. clearly reached to the keeper so tell yeah. me uh, was there any big rough patches from which it was turning for jayasurya from over the stumps not really you know you played at the eden garden so just imagine a sort of at that time a gray pitch uh, with basically soil loose yeah. stop so it wasn't like the rest of the pitch was very good and there were these roughs that he was exploiting the whole okay. pitch had become a little dry flaky and uh, nothing there was no hardness no smoothness the ball was going to turn and sana just had that you know right kind of trajectory you know how it is Pace. and there was enough rough for him to exploit and yes yeah, something that uh, as i said you know uh, that team of that era didn't quite keep their senses about it was there was a lot of passion emotions coming into play it wasn't a calm clinical approach okay sanat is the only dangerous bowler on this kind of pitch because murli just got one wicket i think sanat got three and we could have just played him out without you know trying anything and then you know set up the game for later ajay jadeja was in good form but we always let the emotions get the better of us at that time and it was about trying to get the better of sanat jayaswar and perished okay 
No, but I mean, uh, truth be told, that that era of uh, batsman against spin was also of highest quality, right? So you would think that somebody like an Azhar, somebody like an Ajay Jadeja, even somebody for that matter of yourself, wanting yeah. to take the attack to Jay Surya, was that counterproductive? Would you have changed the approach if it was today? Uh, yeah, today, I mean, now uh, there would be a different answer for every bowler. In that time, you know, 250, I think it was 250, right? Yeah, 250. 250, yeah. So the approach was about, you know, keeping wickets intact and go at three runs and over, four runs and over and try and make it up later. I don't think anyone was really geared or had this role in the first five or six to go out there and take on the bowler at the time. Didn't mm -hmm. happen as much. Martin Crow had uh, that theory of bowling Deepak Patel in 92. He had some pinch hit at the top, but that was very um, rarely done. So our theory Mark, was... Mark Great Batch did it, right? Mark yeah, Mark Great Batch did, did it for him. So, uh, you know, some teams were doing it, but our thing was about setting the platform. Siddhu was a super player of spin. Sachin okay. is, I played spin well, Ajay, Jadeja, everybody. But once the wickets were gone, the pitch had something in it. And something about Sri Lankan Russian, they don't get nervous or anxious that here's a chance for us to get into the finals. And they were superb. And something that I asked uh, Mahela as well, and that's one of the reasons why their performances in ICC tournaments is so good. Because yeah. they've gone to the final stages so often. So nerves on that kind of a stage is something that never afflicts. Sri Lanka and they kept their calm, played sensibly. And I don't know if you followed the series. I had Russell Arnold come on the show some time back. And Russell, when I was actually putting Russell on the back foot. I was telling him, hey, you know what? Uh, Sri Lanka always, you know, you guys, you always keep backing them. But it seems like India is always a bigger brother. We, you know, we don't consider it as some, much of an opponent. And I was just, uh, you know, winding him up. And Rus Russell said something. I mean, he, was, he obviously had to hit back. So he yeah. said, uh, you know what? Uh, if you look at return on investment, the number of people that play cricket in Sri Lanka and the size of our country, our ROI on cricket is far greater than yours. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And I said, oh, okay, I just took, it just hit me. That's yeah. when I realized what an iconic figure Arjuna Ranatunga must have been, right? What, yeah. what, what, what exactly did, was he like? What presence did he make at the Sri Lankan team? Uh, he was a father figure, uh, like a bit, of, bit like Imran Khan. So he was like the boss. And uh, pretty sharp, you know, very street smart. So when he came into bat as well, I, he had lost all power. You know, it's not somebody who would spend a minute in the gym. So he was overweight. He, you know, he walked his singles and twos. But used the pace of the bowlers. So all his runs would be dabs, you know, down to square of doing. Here and there. And that's it. That's all he did. He didn't have the game where he would hit straight down the pitch. But he would surprise you sometimes. But he just had this calmness. And if you speak to, if you get a chance to speak to Arjuna, you'll see that he's a very sort of very secure, confident person. And he had early success. You know, the team was uh, holding him in great awe. He knew Arvinda was a match winner for him in the side. But he was just a guy who was very comfortable leading, very secure. So the team fed of him. A bit like MS, how he seems calm. On the big stage, Arjuna had the same kind of presence. You know, so when all this was happening, you know, Arjuna was typical with his body language around there. wasn't the most excitable guy on the field. So, had limitations in ability, but tremendous self-confidence. Unbelievable. That's a great point that you said. Because yeah. at, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how, how good a player you are. Yes, it does to be the captain of the side. But it also matters about how well, how well you can harness the energy of the team, right? So, like you rightly said, if, if the team plays for a captain... And if a team just plays to its abilities, the team that plays for the captain most often than not wins, right? So, and also, he, he just tried to fit in a small sort of hole in the team. He wasn't like somebody wanted to bat at number three or yeah, he correct. the opening two. You know, he, he knew that he had he was a limited player by that time and he just had to chip in where needed. But his main job was captaincy and ensure that, you know, he was around if he was needed in a crisis uh, situation like this. Wow, that's, that's an unbelievable insight. I didn't expect that today, but it came oh. out as a surprise. Oh. Uh, but tell me something, Sanjay. The, the game was at 120 for 8. Vinod Kambli was batting. Yes, he's, he's probably the only left-hander in the lineup then. Uh, yeah, who was Ajay Jadeja before me. Then there was Sintu Tendulkar, yeah. Attaruddin, myself. Yeah, yeah. So he was the only left-hander in the, in the lineup. But was it much of a thing then to actually send in a left-hander when the left-arm spinner was bowling? Or was it not a thing at all then? It was a thing. I mean, if you look at uh, even before 96, the Nehru Cup, you know, which was uh, late 80s, Chetan Sharma has gone in at number three or something for India and got 100 in a 50 years match. So that okay. has happened. 
but india didn't want to change things purely because you know things were working and mohammad azharuddin who wants to go ahead of mohammad azharuddin is a great player of strength ajay jadhi just had a great time and so and we always thought we'll be able to you know get there because the score wasn't 310 that we thought in the mid innings that we'll have to do something special in at least five or six or 10 overs to you know get that little jump ahead so we did relied on being you know safe and going by the same approach but, that what is there until then but what happened how was the dressing room atmosphere when the whole uh, crowd started you know they were they were obviously disappointed and that was some sort of a theme around india at that uh, time where people expressed their disappointment throwing in bottles and stalling the games and all that sort of stuff uh, did you feel that you were in with a chance because ashish kapoor was a decent first class uh, batsman vinod kambli vinod kambli is very very proudly known in mumbai for how he tongs spin so uh, was it was it like why don't you just give us an outside chance was there a feeling inside like that no no i think uh, when we were what 120 for 8 i think when the match was called off and we know kamli also at the time wasn't really in the best of form then you know they were bowling superbly actually uh, the pitch was responding and arjuna being the captain he was they were giving nothing away so mm-hmm. there wasn't a case of you know see sana jaise you're off and then you'll be fine but there was a dharma sena you know his tail was up there was a muthaya murli that no bowled stand overs i think so we knew we were done when azhar was gone ajay everybody was gone so we were done and we know it was just hanging in there hoping you know something would happen and just delaying the it just can't crowd they very smart they realized that india is not going to win this match on the field so let's try and do something about it so they tried to take the matter in their own hands but five boys was much too smart for them <laughs> <laughs> no i mean uh, that that settled there but uh, we cannot leave i mean we're pretty much done about covering this game but we cannot leave this episode without talking about uh, the sachin tendulkar the batsman in this particular competition can we because it uh, I mean, he didn't have a sponsor on his bat that's the first thing that comes to my head and a uh, very the most of the other team was using a bat with a sponsor called four square if i'm not wrong that includes you as well yeah uh, and he just went out there like a man on possession right what did you make of it uh, can you compare that batting across eras and talk about how you felt about sachin the batsman then see sachin the batsman he made his debut in 89 and in just about a year just i think after maybe he got an 18 in new zealand he got his first 100 in england which is 90 and by 91 92 the world was looking at him as a world class player the age was always a factor just 17 years old and the way he's dominating you know quality attacks but for us in the team uh, there was no doubt that this guy was in a different league and unfortunately by 96 97 uh, the team was really too, too dependent on you know tendulkar because he was damn consistent and he was i think india's first batsman who was able to dominate and hit good balls for runs until then india was about defensive bat- batting and putting the bad balls away like a sunil gavas a couple of sections of sessions of giving respect to the bowler and then you know as they tire out you get the loose ball you score off it sachin would hit a good ball from a quality bowler on the up for four so there was no doubt in anyone's mind that he was in a different league but unfortunately you know the batting around him wasn't great but in india at least you know there were a lot of other batsmen who would get runs it was just that one evening there at uh, eden gardens where again it was left him see such his greatness in that time was his failures were so rare and mm. right through his career you know and that is i think a hallmark of a great batsman such in getting out was a very rare thing so when you look at a scorecard in this also here's a guy such in has gone gone and got a 60 or something in the score of 120 or even more so he's got scores there virtually every inning even at the school level ashwin you know every match he would get a run first run ji debut got a 100 dulip trophy 100 so his failures were very rare and that you know set him apart from all of us sanjay uh, interesting that you speak uh, about sachin in that tone because it, it is not surprising uh, it is not surprising you actually played along with him so much and you admired his batting and in so much so that you also where coming into like support sachin at that time probably being the second batsman rated very highly in mumbai as well uh, but for me when you're talking the first, you said sachin's failure was very rare and you said uh, you know you're talking from a batsman's perspective or a teammate's perspective but as a as a fan or a child watching the game my stomach used to churn when sachin batted because of the fear what if he gets out yeah you know 
you know that sort of that sort of a feeling which i can never forget and uh, this world cup was something that always sticks in my head but do you remember the catch you pulled off against australia sanjay that's something i just wanted to pick out as a moment <laughs> yes can it's we talk to you viewers about the catch uh yeah these are things that you know uh, you've been on the field these are things that happen and then after it's happened you realize oh wow you know i've done something like that so this was my comeback game and by 96 my career had become a bit of a struggle so there's a story as well with this world cup that i was picked in the team but uh, uh in the first game i think it was against kenya in somewhere in katak i wasn't picked and i don't think i played the first couple of games and afternoon of the match i come into the bus and i see navjot singh siddhu have a stiff neck again and as i i got an idea that i could be playing that game so that was my first game of the tournament so obviously okay. a bit nervous playing home ground but at point ricky ponting cuts the ball and the thing is i'm always involved in the game i'm never surprised when the ball comes to me all the other things are later you know my athleticism or is the ability to take catches so i'm never surprised so i was always watching the game and that thing actually happened and as a cricketer i've always felt that when you actually do that you don't think it's that great a catch but when the crowd erupted and even today on people uh, on youtube a lot, a lot of people watch it and say what a fantastic catch that was but when i look back at my career it was more you know that stage when i took the catch the batsman because there have been a few others that i've liked better but that is one of the more sort of famous and talked about catches and an important one rookie ponting that's another game we should have won that we lost okay uh, sanjay uh, that uh, brings us to the end of this episode of reminisce with ash but uh, usually i do this with other guests when i start like ask them questions that i want to do ask them but this will be a slightly different one where i'm going to start now uh, it's called i would like to call it heart to heart right so um there have been a lot of questions that have been coming in from fans ever since i put this saying that sanjay will be live with me and uh, some of them are you know critical and some of them aren't but i would like to ask you something where i can kick it off what do you want the fans of india or all over the world to see sanjay manjrekar as would you would you want them to remember you as the cricketer or as the broadcaster as a good broadcaster or a great broadcaster and this question comes from gaurav sundaram uh okay uh i know gaurav and it's a good question uh off late you know what has happened is i've worked really hard at anything that i do so i've worked really hard at my commentary and i've been doing this for a long time and the producer that work with me realize the value that i bring to the coverage because you'll see me doing tosses <laughs> you'll see me doing interviews i'll be doing lead color so i do virtually everything that is to be done as a broadcaster but then i say certain things which <laughs> you know make news some players get upset they react and that becomes the sanjay mandrik story so the broadcaster and the commentator is left behind and what comes out more is this guy who said this thing and the fans who adore a certain cricketer who i have not uh, you know complimented or have been slightly critical about then obviously that fan club is going to be angry with the sanjay mandrik it's not so much about me the person because nobody has met me and it's no, not but, so much about you, the commentator but about being the best broadcaster or the best cricketer uh, that you want the fans to remember you uh i think broadcaster now because that's been a long career you know let's be honest i played for 10 years and uh, I, i i was a good player i was not brilliant or you know it wasn't that i got a raw deal and i should have played a lot more so i was a pretty good player but as a broadcaster i think coming from india which doesn't have a legacy of you know 15 20 commentators before me that did commentary on the world stage uh, i'd like to say that i've contributed post retirement and i've always tried to do the right things not worrying so much about how people will perceive it but saying it the way it is and then sometimes being surprised when i've made a very benign kind of observation which i thought is quite harmless and then it goes out there and suddenly it's a big story so that sometimes surprises me every time yeah. i I've spoken you spoken to you at length a uh, few times and I do understand you I think I do understand you a little bit from the perspective of what you do and what you say uh, but uh, tell me something is there a, is there a possibility that Sanjay the Sanjay the person and his expectations of what he wanted to be as a cricketer or mm-hmm. the expectations he had of himself is coming in when he has become the broadcaster wanting to sort of say you know I wanted to be the best cricketer but here is another chance I want to be the best here you know be like maybe the sachin tendulkar of broadcasting 
you know is there a possibility that that's there in your head when you're doing the job and is that why sometimes you see uh, cricketers in a very technical fashion in a very you know a, a critical eye sometimes is that a possibility uh see as a cricketer when i finished i retired at the age of 32 because i thought you know there was no way i was going to come back and i made peace with uh, what happened because the one thing that i do and i said this in my book as well if i am critical about somebody else you know if he's feeling hurt he should see me criticize myself because i'm hyper critical of myself so when i quit i knew exactly why i played so much so there wasn't this feeling of you know the world uh, gave me a raw deal or something so that is when you carry the bad blood into your next innings so the next innings has been about something that i really love i enjoy this job and if it's taken away from me enjoyment is taken away from me because i've had opportunities to maybe get into something else as well because there's so much happening in india so we are lucky as we tied cricket there are so many other opportunities but this is something that i love if even after so many years when i get ready to go to the ground i'm happy even doing a 30 minute stint recently in that india new zealand series when you guys were there out of an office here in worthy i was excited so i realized this is a job that i love and if at all anything that happens with me which is uh, perhaps uh, you know people say that this was wrong or you know maybe i didn't do certain things right it's because i've tried too hard so when i've done something it is because i've seen that i've talked about it, i get very passionate about it but uh, you know i try to stay true there is no sort of agenda and i don't think anything spilling over here is just somebody who goes out there trying to give his best and that is my nature even that in just, this insta live i'm trying to give you my best possible of course <laughs> I, i will never deny that i know i will get nothing nothing but the best but just you've just led me on to the next question so uh basically you you are wanting to give your best every time that you go out there and do your job okay let's yeah. not split it as commentary or whatever it is it's a profession you're yeah. making your career is that right yeah. so yeah. when you're making your career uh where where do you actually draw the line because let's say for example in movies uh, you know when they when they're taking a movie uh, there is this you know disclaimer that comes at the start of the movie saying uh, this movie doesn't pertain to any particular individual or any action that's happened anywhere in the world and if it you know hurts anybody's sentiments we are not responsible because it's a story you know yeah. do you do you sometimes have you ever felt that in your in your career as a broadcaster that you know what i gave this interview but you should run this disclaimer mm. before you before you play this interview because you know you, you are commenting on people's emotions mm. uh, not just of the players but also of a fan sentiment right because a lot of people like you said have their fan club and their devotions in fact they're devoted to their cricketers their idols yeah. yeah so keeping yeah. that in mind so keeping that in mind is there some sort of a you know a uh, cassidy in people not being able to see this as a profession and something that's just going on at the backdrop of a game see uh, let's i'm not trying to pull anybody i'm also aware of that so i know my boundaries and that's the reason i'm still around although i have been finished as a commentator 5 years back because i i i am responsible in the way you know i say certain things but indian uh, fan following is unique and that is why ashwin i i look at it positively as well and that is why uh, indian cricket is a billion dollar industry can you imagine a country like india buying rights for 2 billion and 1 billion and dollars us dollars and that is because of the way people follow the game the numbers are there obviously but their following is not you know just watching the game and you know like the sri lankan when you see them at the ground they come to watch the game they blow their trumpets and drums Sri Lanka loses; they just leave, you know, and they're talking among them themselves. The f- uh, fan following in India is unparalleled, and it is more to do not so much with the game itself. It's about people, uh, the Ashwin fans, the Virat Kohli fans, the Dhoni fans, the CSK fans, Mumbai Indians fans. So these are the guys who really drive the cricket market. And then this is the other side that if they love somebody so much, they don't want somebody like me. finding flaws in that man you know so that is something that comes with the job so either if i see that happening either i keep my mouth shut say nothing so that people will like me better you're not going <laughs> to do that things. are you you're never going to do that sanjay let's let's just face it you're going to be who you are so see i i'd like to think that you know over the years you get a sense of articulation as well to say a certain thing but say it in a way that it doesn't hurt uh the player or the fans as well and i think i do that but 
uh, you know, people are sensitive. Players are sensitive. I used to be sensitive. When Dilip Vengsarkar once criticized me in his column, I slipped a note under his door, you know, trying to counter all his observations. So, you know, we've all done it. So it's something I never hold against players when they react. When Tendulkar reacted to a column that I written many years back, or a jadi, I keep quiet because I made an opinion. The player has a right to come back and say that you're talking shit or whatever. So, uh, I mean, that's a very interesting point you, that you're making. That you you do tend to react as a player when somebody makes passes a comment on your cricket or criticism on you. But where does this leave you? Because you've done that as a player and done that as a broadcaster, and you've been at the receiving end and also at the giving end, right? So. uh how do you how do you suggest let's let's just take you as a mentor for a while and yeah. how do you suggest that the next generation or the so called generation of cricketers deal with such jibes or criticisms that come their way because today whatever i say or you say doesn't reach the fan or the public the way we exactly say it right yeah. there yeah. is room yeah. for interpretation and it can be blown out of proportion so when this happens how do you suggest a cricketer handles it uh, do, does he have to pick up the phone and directly deal with it or just not read it how does he how do you think he should go about it you know ideally because this is the thing that i did with dilip pensarkar because he was a friend and i just slipped a note in i didn't react publicly but my defense when i was not playing well was to not read the newspaper or you know somebody would say you know what is written i said forget because i know i'm not playing well i'm sure a lot of people are criticizing me so i think the best way for a player to deal with us and i keep saying that is they should look at us as just I keep saying this garnish over the main dish. You guys are the main dish. People come to watch you. You are the stars, and we are just making noise around it. We are the chatter, and if you show that you are just, we are unimportant because actually we are. You know, it's not that you're going to get dropped because Sanjay Mandrik has said certain things. As a player, sometimes you feel people around you will tell you, you know, this guy is saying these things, and it will start. You know, it's not good for you, whatever. No, it's your final. It's your performance. and the selectors aren't listening to what we're saying and reacting accordingly because we are all I a mean, lot of us are ranting all the time so the best way to deal with people like us is just hi doing his job we don't care kevin peterson actually is a great example that he used to have a problem with you know some of the english commentators about what they were saying and then he came and did a stint with us as a commentator in sri lanka when the world t20 was held and he spent a lot of time in the studio did commentary and at the end of it he said shit you know these guys just say things and it's out of their head and they just move on and do something else and, and so it's not something that they come deciding you know i'm going to go after this guy or this is the agenda for the week they just react and and then he realized that these are pretty cool guys and he actually said immediately after that that i would also recommend that players spend some time when they are free or you know injured be on the other side and just be with them you'll realize no big deal and nobody is really out there with a the madness trying to you know get us went down because the main thing you shouldn't forget and that is something i'm very conscious of is the producer sitting behind my employees my boss because the moment you start doing that they they see it that this guy is sitting there trying to bring somebody down and you're out so you've got to be loyal to your producer and as long as the producer is saying you're doing doing fine you're fine because your loyalty is really with the producers and the viewers not so much with the ravi chandran ashwin but if the producer feels sanjay you're going over the top there or you know rein yourself in that is something that you got to listen because that's his job to make sure there's all within you know the boundaries i i wanted to get to the last question but that's a i have a prelude because of what you said okay. uh, you you talk about the producer and the broadcaster relationship here so i've heard from some of my friends or some of my you know acquaintances from the com box uh, when they speak about this whole bit of what they're talking on the com box how much of it is actually producer driven uh, do they put something in front of you and make you talk about it uh, to sometimes does it catch you off the guard so that you're saying something that uh, that could just come like what you said kevin peterson said you just say it and move on with your life does it happen is it instigated that way is it possible to yeah when you talk is now our profession is now uh, of two things one is commentary when we are there at the site and just doing commentary and there are studio shows happening everywhere else you know in some studio there and that may be slightly producer driven because they've got a running order and they expect right. is supposed to react to that but when we are doing commentary and then generally what happens is because we played the game these are guys who played over 100 international matches no producer really comes in and tells you that you know you got to say this or this was wrong so yes to answer your question 
we are if at all i'm saying something it's not producer driven it's it's okay. my thought and that is the same with most commentators perfect that just gets me to the last question sanjay and a very popular question i must say um i'm just going to shoot it out and build it out as it was asked so the question goes uh, i'll just put the first phase of it uh, a broadcaster where does he draw a line between being biased or not being biased and let's just give you an example if if tamil nadu plays a game with anybody in the world tomorrow mm-hmm. i would say tamil nadu has to win you know mm-hmm. that's because i hail from there uh, but when i do it on the com box does it instigate bias this is coming from the fact that everybody says that when our sanjay sanjay is on commentary box we all know i know that sanjay is from mumbai he loves mumbai to bits but is there a line where you're saying you're not backing mumbai even when you're in the commentary box is that justified or is it saying no hey i can have an opinion and i can have a bias it's absolutely wrong actually i've heard of this that i seem to have a bias for a certain mumbai team in the ipl and i'm anti no not just that generally yeah, but this is generally, generally about mumbai and stuff back. like that yeah so when i started commentary for the first 5 or 10 years as you get a lot of my you know uh, people from the mumbai cricket community who kept saying sanjay yaar you're not pushing our in mumbai players as much in commentary and i'm telling you that is the beauty of mumbai also that sure. when we saw rahul dravid from karnataka play an innings in the irani trophy ravi and myself we were pushing rahul dravid from karnataka or we saw somebody from delhi or from you know wherever orissa ss das you know we used to get excited and i myself have always been about indian cricket the people today think that i am a little pro mumbai indians and not so much pro csk it is purely because i am biased towards excellence a little bit and in my first what out of the 11 12 seasons of the ipl the first 7 8 seasons i was completely sort of csk bold by csk about how great the team was but off late you can see that there has been a surge from mumbai indians so i'm saying those things and i'm also not talking about csk as highly as sanjay, that, that sanjay does, make the connection no no it's not just about the ipl why i put that question out there is because people should know everybody mm-hmm. watches the ipl but they don't understand the contribution of mumbai cricket to indian cricket through the ranji trophy yeah. no not a lot of people know that you guys have won the competition 41 times and you have the dna it takes the dna to win such tournaments and hence you are able to produce excellent cricketers for the country and that's the sort of answer i expected from you because <laughs> in 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 all honesty if i'm if i'm sitting here and i'm i'm i am a very proud cricketer from tamil nadu playing for tamil nadu i want to leave that legacy behind of tamil nadu wanting to be mumbai you know hmm. it's 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 a far cry we are two and you guys are 41 it's going to take a while yeah. Uh, yeah. maybe not in my lifetime or maybe not in the next one but that sort of legacy does that to you doesn't it because you should you should ideally talk about your cricketers because we are not used to doing that a lot in our part of the world and that's something that i've been telling a lot of young cricketers as well we should be able to talk highly of our cricketers and our culture is that right is it fair yeah you're right i mean some people would be thinking like that but maybe i guess i'm different as you honestly i've never been a mumbai person and you know to try to promote mumbai talent even as a player honestly if there was somebody like when i was playing for mumbai and delhi was a stronger team i used to admire the delhi players and i used to keep telling mumbai guys to become like you know some of those delhi players how they winning matches so it, right through my playing career and even as a broadcaster now you know i'm more indian and my friends is well if you look at my friends 15 20 people that are really close and now when i think about it you know how many of them are mumbai or marathi speaking you know they're from all over india and even as a player you know when i shared rooms i, I was with ashish kapoor i was in mongia so it was sachin was you know very close to me during our playing days but that's about it so personally i have never been so much driven by the mumbai thing i'm thankful that you know i was in mumbai when i was growing up because i got a lot of advantages growing up as a player but once i became a player and post retirement it's never been about mumbai you know i always wanted india be to be the team it's become a bit post 2000 that has been the biggest sort of take away for me from my playing career i played from 90s uh no 87 to 97 and we discuss in our chat as well on we spin cricket info that that was the worst sort of phase for indian cricket and that was the biggest regret that i would have that i didn't represent an indian team that the fans could be proud of or the world would look up as you know what a team that's that's great you put your side of the story sanjay but Thank for you. me mumbai cricket is a proper blueprint to follow okay uh and even that now, is something that i sorry even now or earlier uh 
Yeah, I mean, you do get teams where you don't win, Sanjay. But that doesn't mean the blueprint is wrong. You know, the pride, the pride that it carries and the value it carries, it never goes away. Look at the kind of cricketer that's come out. Let's say a Prithvi Shaw, a Shreyas Iyer. All these guys are coming from the rich legacy that Mumbai cricket has left behind. So there is something there. Uh, but we might we might lose out on the path for a few years here and there. But the legacy is never going to go. And that's something everybody should look to replicate in their own styles. So Sanjay, this has been an absolutely exhilarating chat. I've, I've, I've enjoyed being on this side of the fence, and thank, thank you so much for joining me today. It's amazing that a current player like you is so driven to do the kind of stuff that you're doing. Because as a player, I remember I used to just play cricket and be quietly hidden in one corner. So well done! You're doing some wonderful things, and and I sort of sort of read you right in that interview also that we did that you are perhaps one of those guys who just cannot sit still and just be. You've got to keep doing things. So well done. No, in these times, it's very important, Sanjay. I hope your family is keeping well, and uh, we will be uh, back to coming to living. Take care, Sanjay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thanks for all the fans who've joined us. Hopefully, they're still there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. See you, Sanjay. Thank Bye. You. Thanks, thanks, thanks. All right, uh, guys. We were supposed to go ahead with the quiz. Um, it's still uploading. We were, we were supposed to go out with the quiz, uh, quiz right now, but we will do it in a short while. I will be taking a two-minute breather because it just went a little more than what it should have. Just give me a couple of minutes. I will be back on live and do join me on the quiz. Reminisce with Ash quiz.